Hey, it's Eric Wearson from The Observer. Thanks everyone for joining us today. I'm here with the legendary Gene Munster. Gene is a futurologist, prognosticator extraordinaire. So Gene, what we're talking about today really is AI. You know, they always say that there's no such thing as a dumb question. There may be su such a thing as a dumb analogy and I'm about to make one. So let's go back to like say 1995, 1996 and we're on our computers and we're using Alta Vista to do search, right? At that point in time, you know, almost no one had any idea that there was going to be a Facebook or an eBay or any of these other things that were going to be so transformative in terms of the internet in the future. And I kind of feel like maybe is that where we are with AI right now? Like we're just the foothills and we have no idea about what's to come? You nailed it. I think we are in 1996. It's not 1993 when the talk of the internet was just kind of bubbling up. We're a little bit further along. There are products out there like we had in 1996. Yeah, you mentioned Alta Vista. There was Netscape browser. There was uh, uh, kind of shimmerings of what the internet could potentially be. And we're seeing that, of course, with GPT largely today. And so I think that analogy is accurate. And I think we're in, still in front of a three to five year bull market that's going to end in uh, just spectacular bursting of a bubble, but we're still a few years away from that. Wait, are you linking this bubble bursting with, with AI or are you saying in general? It's going to be AI driven. So we're going into a bubble, which is really exciting and also scary because you don't know when that bubble is going to burst. Uh, every major tech wave, say over the last 50 years, and I'm talking about the move for, to supercomputers and then personal computing and then the internet, and now we're in another one called AI. It seems that there's usually a, you know, a bunch of incumbents that they sort of are laggards, they struggle to adapt to new emerging technologies or trends, and eventually they're supplanted by new incoming uh, forces. You think that some of the, the incumbents today, you know, the alphabets, the metas, etc., are really actually doing the right thing. They've learned from the lessons of the past tech waves, and they're really gonna be players in the AI revolution. You know, we can debate how much and the, the, the degree of impact that AI is gonna have in the next 10, 50, 100 years. But there is one piece that uh, I don't think can be debated, which is that the biggest tech companies have identified this as the biggest tech shift over the last 50 years. Is there gonna be a company that's a prominent name that we all know, household name today in tech, that's gonna go the way of BlackBerry? The, the most risk at being disrupted through all this is Tesla. The one that's second and this is a surprising perspective, is what happens with Microsoft. Microsoft's future is in the hands of OpenAI. I'd also add Apple, and I think it's gonna be increasingly important that they build their own models, uh, really to have some uh, independence when it comes to the AI race. The one in the waiting in the wings is this, uh, is Elon's company, XAI. And so he's also building a foundation model. So when you think about who the key foundation models are today, OpenAI has one, Google, Anthropic, there's Llama, which is an open source, but there's room for one or two more that really all of AI is gonna be powered on top of. And these are gonna be massive money makers. So uh, this is another company that I think is going to have a big impact on what's happening on the foundation model perspective. And But the speed of growth that OpenAI, for example, has been breathtaking. About a year ago, they were doing a run rate of 100 million in revenue. Uh, 12 months later, they had a $2 billion run rate. It's as if uh, an infant becomes a teenager in a year. It's just going at like three or 15 times X the, the speed of, of, uh, of normal progress. How do you see the whole power dynamic feeding into this narrative about AI? It's gonna be an increasingly important topic. I think we have uh, you know, we talk about this three to five window year window. I think within three years, this could be, uh, this is the one piece that uh, gives me some pause about everything that I've talked about and the pace of innovation. Uh, if you kind of look at the track in terms of where the power consumption is and look at the United States, we're probably, if the growth continues at the rate that it is, and the chips continue to use the same amount of power that they're requiring today, we're at about a three year window until there's gonna be some metering back. Just a final thought on this kind of this path is um, this is all my speculation of how it plays out. And there's one piece that I don't think can be debated or speculated in terms of the impact of AI in our lives. And I think that it will be uh, the negative side here is that it's gonna be progressively more difficult to step away from your tech. 
I think you're going to see an increase in uh, mental illness. I think that uh, I think there'll be more tribalism. I think that people, because of the deep fakes, it's going to be harder for people to trust each other. You'll see a video of something, you won't trust that video. Obviously, my editors in New York are going to want to know the answer to this one. What's going to happen to journalists and columnists and writers like myself? I think that the three things that m humans can do that machines will never be able to do are creativity, community, and empathy, creativity, community, and empathy. And the creativity piece can be debated, like, because machines do have a form of creativity today, but it needs this spark from a human, it needs a spark from a human. Uh, when it comes to empathy, part of being empathetic is knowing that there's another human uh, behind uh, that page that you're reading. And I think that journalism, how they write, is gonna become different. I think that they will rely increasingly on these generative tools to write more quickly, but it still is going to be relevant because it does the three things that machines don't do, that creativity, community, and empathy. Thanks so much for chatting with Observer today. It was great getting your insights around artificial intelligence. Thanks so much. Ton of fun. It's the topic that's gonna keep giving. So look forward to joining again, Eric, and bye for now.